In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise, and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The word of the Lord is found recorded in St. Paul's second letter to the church at Corinth, the third chapter, beginning at the twelfth verse. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold, not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. But their minds were hardened, for to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, that same veil remains unlifted because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is found recorded in the Gospel of St. Luke, the 8th chapter, beginning at the 16th verse. Jesus said, No one, after lighting a lamp, covers it with a jar or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a stand, so that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be made manifest, nor is anything secret that will not be made known and come to light. Take care then how you hear. For to the one who has, more will be given, and from the one who has not, even what he thinks that he has will be taken away. Then his mother and his brothers came to him, but they could not reach him because of the crowd. And he was told, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside desiring to see you. But he answered them, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A devotion from the writings of Martin Luther based on the text Matthew twenty two forty four, which reads, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Here Christ does not explain, but only says that David in his psalm called Christ his Lord. How then doth David in the spirit call him Lord? It does not sound right, and it is contrary to nature for a father to call his son Lord, be subject to him, and serve him. Now David calls Christ his Lord, and to whom the Lord himself says, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. That is, be like me, acknowledged and worshipped as the right and true God. For it becometh none other to sit at his right hand. He is indeed so jealous that he allows no one to sit equal to him. As he says, my glory will I not give to another. Since the Lord now makes Christ equal to himself, he must be above all creatures. Therefore he proposes to the Jews a great question without solving it for they did not understand it, and the time had not yet come to make this publicly known. But the meaning is as our articles of faith teach us to believe, that Christ was both David's true natural son of his blood and flesh, and also David's Lord, whom David himself must worship and hold as God. However, it was impossible to make these statements harmonize as it is still impossible for human reason, where the Holy Spirit does not reveal it, 
to comprehend how the two should be at the same time in one Christ, that he was truly David's seed and God's son by nature. Now Christ propounded this question to teach that it is not enough to have the law, which only shows from what state we have fallen, but that Christ must be born not in sin as David and all men are born, but had to be born without man of the Virgin, sanctified by the Holy Spirit, born a real true man yet without sin. He is the only man that has been able to keep and fulfill the law. This one must intercede in our behalf before God and be our right hand and protection in whom we have forgiveness of sins and deliverance from God's anger and hell. He also gives us the Holy Spirit to follow him until we come to him and be like him without any sin and in perfect righteousness. We confess together our common and saving faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.